On first down, the handoff to Marlon Mack. Huge hole, 50 yard line. He's at the 40, still going near sideline. He's at the 10, he's at the 5, and he will score. Touchdown, Marlon Mack. Touchdown, INDY. And again, it's picked up. It's Darius Leonard. Leonard with his second INT, and he's streaking down the near sideline. He's at the 40, he's at the 30, he's at the 20. He's going to go. A pick six for the Maniac. Kenny Moore gets to Deshaun Watson. That's a sack for Kenny Moore. Kenny has a pick and now a sack in the game. Horseshoe is back, baby. The horseshoe is back. What's up, everybody? Welcome back to the Bring the Juice podcast. I'm your co-host, Derek Larger. With me, as always, is Cody Felger. And today, we have a very special guest. She is the producer and on-air talent for the Indianapolis Colts, Lara Overton. Laura, thank you so much for joining us today. Hey, thanks for having me, guys. It's a great opportunity to be able to do this. And fortunately, right now, we have the time where we're able to do a lot of additional things and have some really fun, valuable conversations in addition to everything that is happening as the NFL continues to evolve with everything going on still amid free agency and and preparation for the draft. So certainly a lot happening in our world. Yeah. And speaking of all of that, that kind of leads me into my first question for you. Obviously with the coronavirus going around, everyone has had their lives impacted in some way, obviously with the NFL, things are trying to move on as normal, but obviously there's some things that are still going on. So, with obviously Lara when we see people you know still doing these interviews and doing free agency and everything not everyone knows kind of what goes on behind the scenes so uh, how has your life been personally and how has it been for work given all the limitations you have with this coronavirus you know we've really had to adapt a lot but a credit to everyone across our organization and across the NFL with how creative people have gotten with you know, finding ways to do interviews via Zoom and different things like that. That's what we've been doing with all of our free agent signees. And luckily, the guys have just been so accommodating in doing that. So truly, it's such a testament to people being so understanding and being so willing to adapt and try out new things. You know, we all know that each each day, we're probably trying something we haven't done before. So we have to be a little bit more patient. It's taking us a couple of attempts maybe to try something new. And Mm -hmm. it's also one of those times where we're all brainstorming. We're all trying to come up with creative ideas to continue producing really valuable content, to continue connecting with fans. So we're always trying new things out. So anyone who has ideas, certainly send them our way because nothing is off the table in terms of kind of how we're connecting and adapting and finding new ways to to do our jobs and still proceed, certainly not as normal, but proceed in a way that is productive, keeping people informed, keeping people engaged right now. So uh, we were, uh, we shot several weeks of content leading up to the point where all of our offices were closed. And that was, you know, a league wide thing. So what we've been doing over the past few weeks is working on content, like with the next pick and our Colts life, Series. So you saw episode one of With the Next Pick, which premiered last week. We've had a couple of different Colts Life series with Naheem Hines and Jack Doyle that have recently been released. And then in addition to that, I kind of have had a setup at my house where I've recently had conversations with guys like Xavier Rhodes and Sheldon Day and TJ Carey and the DeForest Buckner and Philip Rivers moves came in a time fashion when we were still able to be in the complex. Only limited numbers of people were allowed to be in. But those interviews I did do in studio because it was just, I was the only person in studio. We had one person in the control room and then the guys were FaceTiming. And for those interviews now, over the last two weeks, since we've been completely operational in a work from home situation, our PR staff has just been incredible with getting guys on board to do Zoom calls, do different types of things. I think TJ Carey wins for having maybe the cutest one so far because (laughs) he was in his home office and I could hear like a little voice in the background and he said, you know, I'm I'm home all the time now. And so when I'm home, his two-year-old son is always wanting to be with him because he's not used to dad being at home this much, right? Because he's usually training or, you know, all doing all your different off season type of programming. So I was like, well, bring him in. So little Elijah just hops in his lap and does the majority of the interview with him. So in some ways it's really 
been an opportunity for the guys to open up and see a different side of them. They're opening up their homes to us, bringing them to where they are. They're talking to us about the challenges that they're facing. You, I mean, you can imagine they don't have the facilities, the weight rooms that they're used to having, whether they're, you know, training here in Indy during the off season or they're training elsewhere at different facilities. So they're getting creative in, as well, working with their trainers or finding spaces. Some of them do have some sort of facility in their home, not likely the caliber with which they're used to working out in, but it's really an interesting time for everyone. And I think it's just a testament to everyone trying to be a little, a little extra patient and understanding that maybe uh, it's going to take us a couple of th times to get things right, but mm -hmm. we're really, everyone has worked really hard to, as best as we can, continue producing the high level of content, as much content as we typically, you know, would be to this point in time and free agency and all the off season moves and things that are going on with the draft have certainly allowed us to continue to have a lot of great conversations and doing things like we do with our official Colts podcast mm -hmm. and things like that as well. Yeah, Lara, you, you were talking about some of those guys that you've been able to connect with via Zoom and other different ways. What, you know, I know obviously you haven't been able to, besides the guys that were signed early or traded for mm -hmm. early, you haven't really been able to have them in the facility. Nobody's been able to go into the facility. But based off of kind of your conversations, whether that's, you know, what we see as fans or even, you know, stuff off air, what are kind of your overall impressions of some of these new signees for the Colts I mean, you kind of touched on it a little bit with TJ Carey and his son, but what have kind of been your overall impressions of some of these guys that the Colts have more recently uh, signed in free agency? I think the trend or, you know, the continuous thing, the, the similarity that I've seen in all these conversations is all these guys are really hungry guys. They're coming in motivated. They're coming in excited about the opportunity that there is. That's something that in each of those conversations that I've come away and felt like that there was a really palpable investment in what they're doing. Guys who are really eager to get here and get started. And we know it's going to be a while likely before we all come together and are able to get those guys working together and assimilating with their new teammates, new system, new coaches, all of that. But they are just excited for the opportunity. Some of the guys, you know, Sheldon Day is coming home to right. Indianapolis, mm -hmm. the place where he grew up, grew up as a Colts fan. Philip Rivers is excited to reconnect with Coach Reich and Coach Sirianni and have a bit of a fresh start after, you know, spending the entirety of his career with the Chargers. But what an opportunity for him to play behind this offensive line and see what he has left in the tank. So everyone I've talked to throughout these conversations, I mean, DeForest Buckner is as dynamic of a player that I've talked to in my career more than 10 years in broadcasting. And, you know, the situation was obviously something where, unlike being a free agent, the trade, he didn't have quite have as much of a say in it, but a guy who was really excited for the opportunity that he has here, he couldn't say enough great things about how excited he is to play alongside Justin Houston. And then to have guys like Darius Leonard there on this defense as well. I think that there's, it's a great locker room dynamic where you have such great strong young talent in accompaniment to strong veteran leadership that makes this 2020 season to me very interesting and the thing that's difficult is for a lot of these guys and I've asked each of them I asked Philip you know how do you begin to try to I mean as a quarterback having the respect having the following of your locker room is crucial it's integral how do you do that coming in as the new guy into the system when you know your off-season program is going to be impacted quite heavily? Mm -hmm. And we may even see this into training camp. He said that he is going to, you know, be uh, – he's definitely going to take the initiative to reach out to guys, whether it's connecting via Zoom, FaceTime, texting, all those different things. So I, I know that Coach Wright has been one of uh, those who has been really progressive in making sure the coaching staff is on the same page. They're doing exactly what we're doing now. They're using Zoom. Chris Ballard, the scouts, the front office, they're doing this as well in terms of preparing for the draft. So that's what you're going to see team-wide is guys just finding different ways to connect. And there's nothing – there's no replacement for being firsthand, interacting, practicing together, playing together, certainly. But as much as they can, taking this opportunity to try to reach out to guys, find that common ground to connect on, and at least start talking about those common goals – that you have and those ideas that you have on how to push one another to get better and achieve your goals, no matter what adversity you're facing here in these months of the off season. 
Yeah, so obviously the coronavirus has kind of put a uh, stop to your normal life of your new role, uh, obviously as the producer and on-air talent, but obviously you bet you were with Fox 59 for several years and you've worked your way up to where you are now. So with your new role in being the producer and on-air talent, uh, how has your perception changed with how you're looking at the team and how you're initiating your role? Is it, is it harder? Is it more fun? Uh, how have you felt about your new role? Oh, that's a great question. It's exciting. I, I really am excited. This, this role is one that I started in July, so hit the ground running. I started uh, with the team, and 10 days later, we were at training camp. So we've really just been full steam ahead since I got started. And for me, it's just a shift in perspective in terms of when you're in, whether it's local news or national news, one of your driving forces is trying to break news, right? We want to break news and we want to have the story first and all those types of things. And that's not your motivation in this role. You still have uh, the, the investment in terms of storytelling, but the storytelling is different. And also depending on the time of year, my role looks quite, quite different. When we are in season, there is a bit of a you're still breaking news to some degree in terms of I'm doing radio sidelines in game. So I'm relaying injury information and making sure Matt Taylor and Jim Sorge are getting the most accurate, most up-to-date information from an injury perspective. But I also have to be careful in that I am coordinating and communicating with our PR staff, our training staff, and getting the most accurate information. And rather than if you're a reporter on the outside, you have alternate sources who might be able to tell you things. We are committed to making sure that everything that we're communicating is coming internally and we get the most accurate information that we can in that moment that we're re relaying it. And also uh, within the respects of our training staff and all of those types of things. So from the producer side, I'm doing a heavy workload on the storytelling. So I'm producing all of our original series, which includes With the Next Pick and Colts Life that we talked about. We also have Behind the Colts, that's our training camp series, similar to that hard knock style format. And then we have Colts Forever, which is our alumni series. And this fall we went and did alumni series pieces, Colts Forever pieces with both Jeff Saturday and Hunter Smith. So it's mostly just thinking in a different perspective where when I was in local news, if you're doing a package, you know, a regular story, you have a minute and a half, minute and 45 for an entire sports cast that you're getting in, not only Colts news and NFL, but NBA, college football, college basketball, whatever happens to be, is maybe three minutes. Well, now because of the Colts platforms with Colts.com, YouTube, Facebook, all of those different digital media platforms, social media platforms, a lot of our pieces are 10 minutes. So I really get to delve into part of being a journalist that I love, and that's telling these longer form features in a different way, really investing in the storytelling and being able to build a really strong story over a 10 minute segment rather than maybe a minute and a half or a two minute segment. So it's, it's awesome because the access that we have that we are provided because of our ownership, our front office, our coaching staff, our players, our PR department, we are able to really connect with them and tell deeper stories, more meaningful, more impactful stories than you are when your motivation, your objectives are a little bit different from a local news perspective. You're still doing a lot of that, but it's not to the same degree. So luckily, I even when I was working for Fox 50 and CBS4, I had done a decent amount of freelance work with the organization. I had ho hosted the weekly show, which used to be called Colts Up Close. It's now Colts 360. I had broadcast some of the preseason games from the sidelines. So I had great relationships within the organization. So that laid a really solid foundation. Now it's been an incredible opportunity to grow within Colts Productions and do all of those things to a much greater degree. So my role looks very different from, say, preseason, regular season, and then into the off season. So the biggest I would um, challenge maybe is just juggling a lot of different things. You know, some days and some hours of the day, I'm wearing my producer hat and I'm being a producer. Other hours of the day or other weeks of the year, I'm working more as a host and reporter, but I'm really learning how all of those things complement one another. And it's also been a great opportunity to firsthand 
just learn more about one, what matters to our fan base? What's mm -hmm. the content that they want to see, that they need to see? What matters to our players? What's the type of content, you know, from their perspective, they have their own brands that they're looking out for. What are the stories that they want to share and they want to tell and being able to really for form valuable relationships with them so that they're comfortable maybe opening up different perspectives of themselves and sharing different aspects of themselves. For example, with Colts like Jack Doyle, we went to his house, you know, this was before everything obviously escalated <laughs> to the degree it was just several, several weeks ago, but we learned about Jack as a father. Everyone knows about Jack as a football player, right? And how well-respected he is in the locker room, as a teammate, as a leader of this team. But Jack's such a private guy. He's such a humble guy. We hadn't been able to tell that story of what it looks like for Jack to parent uh, a three and a half month old and a 10 month old, uh, or three, sorry, three and a half year old and a 10 month old. Um, so being able to, I think he's 10 months. That sounds about right. No, he's like, no, maybe he's older than that. I'm trying. Babies are all, I never know time frame on babies, <laughs> but so a baby and a toddler. So right. Ronan and Henry, his two boys. So being on this side of things, I'm able to go in and be a producer and think about formulating this story, the story we want to tell, who needs to be involved, what are the questions we're asking. Those are all the things that I'm doing from a producing perspective. And it's fun to be behind the camera and do all of those things and tell stories in a different light than I was necessarily as strictly a reporter when you're thinking about presenting this on camera, you know, from your perspective, being on camera, being the voice to these things. Now I'm the producer behind the scenes and letting these stories really uh, come to fruition and evolve and develop and stand alone in their own right without necessarily needing, you know, a, a reporter track or someone to present it up front. We're letting the players tell their stories. Yeah. Gotcha. Yeah. I want to double back on something you said earlier about kind of when you started in this role. So you start in late July, Colts have training camp. Very quickly after that, a few weeks later, Andrew Luck shocks the world, right? He retires. So I remember where I was. I was sitting, I remember I was sitting in my basement and I was just like watching, I think Netflix or something and just like, no way, like this can't be real. And I think that was just kind of the reaction of yes, Colts fans, even the national media, everybody was just, it was crazy. It was absolutely nuts. I'm curious for you, you know, you go into this role, it's a new thing. And then your star quarterback retires a couple of weeks before the season. What kind of was your reaction to hearing this news and kind of what happened? What were some of the conversations you had with some of the people, you know, maybe Matt Taylor, some of those people because of this giant groundbreaking news, like what happens in, in your role there when the star quarterback retires a couple of weeks before the season and now you're kind of scrambling around? Well, you think about it this way. I mean, I was on the sidelines because during preseason, for our preseason games, I am the sideline reporter for our TV broadcasts. Mm -hmm. So I had just done a sideline hit. I think I'd done an interview with maybe Naheem is who I'd been talking with. I mean, I, I come out of just finishing up this interview and I walk over. Uh, I don't keep usually my phone on me during games. I have like, a, I have get notifications on my watch or whatever, but I try not to just, you've got so many other things to kind of manage. I usually mm -hmm. just keep my phone kind of tucked away. So I hadn't seen any of the tweets or anything that were being reported. And one of our really talented videographers who was shooting the game runs up to me and he shows me the tweet. And I look over and I mean, Andrew's sitting on the sideline or standing on the sideline. And I'm like, well, this doesn't make any sense. Like, what do you mean? He's, he can't retire. He's, I'm seeing him standing, you know, right there. And I was like, it's a fake account, fake account, I'm sure. Um, and I didn't exact I mean at that point I knew that we couldn't it, it was so much speculation there was nothing that had been validated yet so we really had to wait you know alongside everyone else until we had the press conference you know it wasn't anything that I had had knowledge of nothing I'd even had or heard anything spoken about so you know I'm standing on the sidelines we still have a few minutes left and I'm talking to our play-by-play -play guy and our analyst so it's Rick Venturi who's our analyst former Colts coach and then on play-by-play -play was Greg Rakestraw and we're all hearing it and it was it hadn't been substantiated to a point that we felt comfortable that we could report on anything so it's one of those you go back to your your journalistic foundation right if if we can't confirm anything I mean it's coming from Adam Schefter but we don't know where he's getting it so 
we really, I, I took a step back from it and I really trusted the guys to, in terms of the live broadcast, handled and addressed that there were reports and, you know, Matt Taylor, they, they addressed it in a way that this has been reported, but there was no confirmation. So we really very much had to be careful in you know, allowing this all to play out. And I, it wasn't until Andrew walked in to the room to deliver his message and make that statement that I, you know, knew that this was the decision that he'd come to. And, you know, from that point on, it was, all right, let's, let's move forward. And uh, that was the, I think everyone got to Monday and that was Coach Reich's message. And so we all just, you know, did the same thing. And it was interesting for me in terms of, okay, you know, if I were in a local news capacity, I'm sure I would be tweeting this out, you know, immediately or trying to get reaction from someone. Being in a different capacity, being with the team, I really had to take myself and my ego out of it. It wasn't about my trying to break news. It wasn't about my trying to, you know, be the reporter. Obviously, you're not going to get to it first or whatever it is. So I really kind of thought about this and this was such a bit much bigger issue that I took a complete step back and took a breath and worked with our PR department and worked with who I was broadcasting with and worked with my boss with Colts Productions. And I was like, this is whatever need, whatever's going to transpire, this needs to be coming directly from the franchise, needs to be coming directly from the quarterback. This isn't a time when we are the voice of this um, event, so to speak. So it was interesting, certainly. And I have you know, worked with Andrew for a number of seasons and had covered him and have all the respect in the world you know, for him as a man, as a football player. So it was certainly an interesting uh, time from being a, a journalist and being new to the role. But I really think that as an organization, PR handled it really well and you know, had the press conference right then. And from Monday moving on, we were all, you know, looking forward and really respecting the decision that Andrew had come to. And, you know, it seems like from everything that we've seen, you know, we've, he's popped up in videos here or there on social media and really enjoying his life being a father. Mm -hmm. And I think that everyone is certainly really excited for this next chapter and really excited mm -hmm. that Andrew is still around and involved <laughs> in some degree and clearly going to be an amazing father because Andrew overachieves at everything he does. So I'm sure he's gonna you know dad of the year of course um and, and all the things that he has had yeah so obviously you mentioned your uh sideline reporting I, i'm gonna ask you one last question here so obviously you've spent a lot of time on the field and talking with so many different players so many different coaches and figuring out uh stuff on the field and off the field so over your years with the colts who's been like one of your favorite players and coaches to talk to whether that be on the field or off the field oh my gosh that's really put me on the spot I don't play favorite <laughs> no pressure you know usually uh I know I, I I'd be remiss if I didn't mention coach Dungy every single mm. time he's one of the just most generous people he takes the time to do every single interview you I mean anytime we've ever asked or I've asked or needed him to contribute to something he is just one of the kindest individuals and has such a care for this organization, for Indianapolis, for the fan base, for anyone who's involved. He is going to go out of his way for whether you spent time with him in the organization or not, whether it's guys who played for him or guys who are playing now who he didn't necessarily share the locker room with. He is just, he's so invested and continues to be so invested in this organization and want what's best for this organization. And he's one of those people who I always walk away from conversations with having learned something, whether that's football wise or whether that's just humanity wise. He is just, he's absolutely just an incredible person. And I am so grateful that he continues to be involved and come to training camp and, you know, be around when he does. Um, Gosh, other in terms of, so, I mean, Coach Dungy, I, it doesn't get any better, doesn't get any better than that. And, you know, I have to also say, everyone asks me because with our weekly show, I get to have a lot of conversations with Coach Reich. He's on the show every week. We do a weekly segment with him. So I'm very grateful that at least once a week, I'm having a 10 to 15 minute conversation with Coach Reich one-on-one. -on -one, and people ask me, is Coach as good as he seems? And I'm always like, no, 
he's even better. He's better than what he is perceived to be. What you guys get to see on camera or on the field on Sundays is awesome. He's even better than that when you get to interact with him on a personal level. He is in ab just absolutely incredible. I walk away from our, our weekly conversations that we have and, you know, just the insight that he provides, the perspective, how candid he is. It's just, he really is someone who, to me, it's always a refreshing conversation because coach Reich is he doesn't shy away from things either that's one thing I really appreciate about him is when we've had to have some of the you know tougher conversations he does he knows I'm not just going to toss up softballs when we've talked about injuries or we talked about Andrew's retirement or we talked about you know the adversity they faced throughout the season coach never shies away from any of those conversations and always you know answers them thoroughly and respectfully and thoughtfully and I just really appreciate that about Coach Reich and I mean player wise I, the thing is we bring such high character guys into the organization mm -hmm. there I, I can't say that there's been like a bad interview or a difficult guy I've had to deal with because the way that we continue to draft and bring guys in whether it's free agency or through the draft they're all such great people in addition to being such talented football players but I mean one one of who will always be my favorite whenever he comes back to Indy I can never miss an opportunity to talk with Reggie Wayne he's always one of my favorites just because he's so dang funny and he has so much energy and he's such a character and just so beloved by the Colts you know anytime you get a conversation with Reggie people are going to be all over mm -hmm. it mm -hmm. Absolutely. Well, I think that does it for this interview. Lara, thank you so much for taking time out of your busy schedule with all the craziness happening around the league. And just thank you for taking time to kind of talk about your experiences with the Colts. Um, what are some new things that are going to be coming out, you know, down the pipeline for you guys at Colts.com there that, that we can be looking forward to? Oh, so glad that you guys asked. We're going to have the next episode of With the Next Pick coming up very soon. So we did With the Next Pick last year, and this is, well, I say we, but I wasn't part of the organization yet. But the first season of With the Next Pick followed the entire draft process from end of the season through draft weekend. Same thing, but this season we have some new perspectives, some new personalities that we're introducing you to. With episode one, it all started with Chris Ballard's end of the season press conference. We went to um, Mobile, Alabama for Senior Bowl, followed the scouts through that process and what they do and how they utilize that opportunity at the Senior Bowl to get a really good foundation of scouting the talent that's coming up for the 2020 NFL Draft. And so episode two, we delve a little bit further into um, some of the people who are integral to the conversations that are had because you guys have heard Chris Ballard enough. He really values collaboration and every single person who's in that draft room has a voice and has a voice that matters. So you're going to start to see those people and also learn more about the priority that the Colts put on certain calibers that they're grading, why they grade things the way that they do and how that's all going to lead into this draft process playing out, even with trading the 13th pick for DeForest Buckner, we'll delve into that a little bit and how all of that transpired too from Chris Ballard's perspective. So there'll be some interesting insight too in terms of what went into that. And then all the other picks, of course, that they hold coming up here in a few weeks, because we do know that although it's not going to be business as usual for the draft, we're still going to have a draft. It doesn't appear that everything is going to go, they're at least going to select players. There's not going to be the pomp and circumstance in Vegas. And it's very likely that teams won't be meeting at their facilities. So it's a great way to see how teams are adapting. It's incredible uh, insight from our front office. And I can't say enough just how grateful we are to have the staff from that front office side, the scouts, the coaches, who allow us the access to tell these types of stories because we are dealing with unprecedented times. And you're going to learn a lot about how the organization is adapting and, and working through all of these things to be sure that when we are playing football in 2020, that, you know, they've brought in the absolute best possible people to set the Colts up for success this upcoming season and down the road. Yeah. Well, thank you, Laura. We, we really appreciate you taking the time to come on here. Uh, it was tremendous, a tremendous conversation. A lot of awesome insight that you gave us. So uh, we appreciate you coming on and we'll have to do it again sometime.
Awesome. Sounds great. Thanks for having me, guys. I appreciate it. Oh, no problem. Thank you.